Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and these stories come from Newcastle and it's about organised crime families. A case that has been heard in Newcastle Crown Court has resulted in two brothers being jailed for shooting the mother of their enemy in the kitchen while she cooked a cottage pie. They have been jailed for a total of 48 years. Thomas and James Lee opened fire on Emma Robinson through the window in a revenge attack after a falling out with the brothers and her son. Miss Robinson was in her home in Westerhope, Newcastle over a year ago and on the Saturday night she heard a loud bang and the window broke before feeling something hit the side of her face and the back. As the Lee brothers were jailed for 24 years each, a victim impact statement was read by Miss Robinson and it said that the traumatic event had left her traumatised. She was left with scars from the pellets that were removed from her arm, shoulder and back and she felt very self-conscious about it. She added that she had trouble sleeping and suffers from anxiety and depression and she said, when I'm alone at night, I keep thinking about what happened and how much worse my injuries could have been. She added that she now has blackouts and goes blind at home and doesn't stand by windows and is nervous when she hears loud bangs, such as fireworks. Newcastle Crown Court heard that at around 10pm on October the 3rd last year, Miss Robinson was in her kitchen on Ford Moss Walk in Newcastle when the window was broken by the brothers. She didn't initially realise what had happened and she said during the trial that I was just cooking dinner and facing the microwave and I heard a loud bang. She said it was like an echo and I felt something hit me, but I didn't know if it was glass or something else. The prosecution Simon Myerson said that it was not necessary for the prosecution to prove a motive for the attacks, but told the jury, as far as we can tell, Jordan King was shut at because he had an argument with one of the men and Emma Robinson was his mother. So these brothers shot the mother of their enemy and their enemy being Jordan King and then they chased him down and shot at him also a matter of hours later. Witnesses told the court that Thomas Lee was seen outside his father's address, screaming in anger and saying on the phone, I've shot people before, I've used a gun. The Lees were cleared of trying to murder Mr King, who was shot 26 hours after his mother was. And this was simply over disrespect. The prosecution said that anybody that was firing into the kitchen would have known that the room had a woman inside. And at 1.35am on October the 5th, Neighbours heard arguing and saw two men, one being addressed as Thomas, outside and Mr King hanging out the window. A witness then saw a man go into the block and heard a shot being fired and he was shot in the right ear in the exact same place that his mother was. He told the prosecution that he'd been running away when he was shot. The prosecution said that they understand that Thomas Lee admits he fired a gun but doesn't admit that he tried to kill anybody or do any serious harm. He was found guilty of possession of the gun and the prosecution said that they hatched a plot to shoot two alleged victims and tried to avoid detection. The jurors were given the details and the moments of various vehicles moving around the area and jurors were told the sawn off shotgun and cartridges were found in the boot of a Ford Mondeo that they had access to but no direct direct connection. James Lee admitted dangerous driving after the second attack and also was convicted of possessing ammunition and the fact that he was within five years of him being jailed for nine months in 2017 for a racially aggravated attack. Thomas Lee admitted possessing a firearm also. James Lee had admitted an unrelated charge of child cruelty after wiping chocolate on a kid's mouth and telling them that it was poo. Thomas Lee admitted assault in a special constable, racial harassment, assault in a PC and possession of cannabis. Thomas Lee, who has 54 convictions, and James Lee of Henry Nelson Street, who had 65 convictions, were jailed for 24 years each. They must serve at least two-thirds of the 24 years behind bars, and the judge said that Thomas Lee was a dangerous offender and imposed an extended license on him of an additional four years. James Lee will also be banned from driving for a year after his release. The judge did say that Thomas Lee has probably got autism and Toby Headworth QC for James Lee said the shooting was a revenge attack for the argument that got out of hand. 
And sadly, this is the reality of becoming a career criminal. 64 offences, and I'm sure that neither of them even realised that they'd accumulated that many criminal offences, and it is that easy to occur as well. And when other members of your family are involved in criminal activity, it definitely makes it harder for the next generation to move away. As is proven in this other story from Newcastle, where two families were actually jailed for a war that occurred last year. In very similar circumstances to the other story, uh, this was all over revenge and disrespect. Ken Thompson was firing expanding hollow tip bullets from a semi-automatic handgun out of a moving vehicle at a car and the court heard that it was done to intimidate or send a message. He was in a full-on rage after a team relative had been shot earlier by the Egan Hack family. After firing at least five rounds into a Dacia vehicle in Owswick, he fled the area and disposed of the weapon that was thrown into the River Tyne. It was around tea time on a summer's day in a cul-de-sac in the west end of Newcastle when the piece was pierced by the sound of gunshots. The 45-year-old was then jailed for six years at Newcastle Crown Court for firearm possession and ammunition. The judge said there was no evidence any members of the public were present, but it was likely that children were in the area and Thompson's actions had caused serious, even fatal risk to any bystanders. The judge told Thompson that your intention was to intimidate and send a message to other people that you took the law into your own hands. It was during the school holidays and children could have been close by and playing in the garden. You fired the gun five times and the risk you caused was very obvious. This is a prohibited weapon and they found a substantial amount of ammunition as well when they discovered the gun. The CCTV of the shooting was shown in court and they said that it was payback and Kenneth admitted that he was in the rear side of the car. The court heard that the police were not informed straight away and they attended the scene two days later and local residents confirmed that there had been gunshots that week and this is a very familiar situation that I'm seeing in Newcastle. Gunshots are not reported straight away. In the other case with the Lee brothers, the mother that was shot didn't actually report it to the police straight away either and this means that there's no media attention and no crime scene at the scene of the shooting and then the public have no idea what happened and this is exactly what occurs in these smaller cities where you will hear about the shootings in London but you will hear less about shootings in Newcastle for reasons like this. The court heard the weapon was a semi-automatic with hollow tip bullets Thompson from Newcastle had 42 previous convictions and pled guilty to having a firearm with intent to commit a criminal offence or criminal damage, possessing a firearm and more than 80 rounds of ammunition and also criminal damage. Several members of the Hack family have also been jailed alongside Kenneth Thompson. The shooting of Thompson's relative led to the revenge attack and this drew the attention of the police who realised that they had to lock everybody up that was involved. The police described the Hack family and also the Tams family as an organised crime group and they also sentenced Mary Egan to several years for her role in the actual conspiracy. The complex investigation was led by Northumbria Police's Homicide and Major Investigation Team and when they spoke after the trial, Detective Inspector Ed Small said, I want to make it absolutely clear that this is no place for this type of behaviour and it would not be tolerated. Today's convictions and sentencing mark the end of this investigation and I want to thank all the members of the public, officers, crime scene investigations and also digital experts who gave us all the help to convict them. So I thought this was a really interesting story to show the different dynamics in different cities around the, the, around the country as well. And the next time that you see an inner city case, such as Birmingham or London, ask yourself what is going on in a little city where nobody's really looking. The newspapers in this area didn't even go to the crime scene. They had Google images of the crime scene. So of course, how is anybody going to ever find out about a story if there is no documentation? So I really appreciate you joining me today and I hope this definitely encourages some young people to make some better choices and to see the consequences to the actions for these types of activities. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me online as well at Scar City Studios and send your stories to news at scarcitystudios.com. Peace.